Well, recent studies show that more younger adults are being diagnosed with colon cancer, and early detection is key. Last month, the American Cancer Society reported that 20% of cases were among adults age 55 and younger. That's an increase from 11% of cases in 1995. They say further research has seen a steady increase over recent decades. And joining me now is Dr. Neha Narula, primary, primary care physician at Stanford HealthCare. So, doctor, what are the current guidelines when it comes to screening, especially with more younger adults now being diagnosed? Yes, Ryan, um, this is such an important topic. And the most updated guidelines now recommend that the average risk individual should begin screening at the age of 45, rather than the traditional, you hit 50, you get your colonoscopy. Now, like you mentioned, uh, cases in adults under the age of 55 have risen quite dramatically. We don't know exactly why, but early detection is key because it does lead to better diagnosis and improved prognosis uh, later on. Now, the age of 45 is recommended for people with average risk. If it is important to check in with your medical provider, especially if you have a personal history of inflammatory bowel disease or other medical conditions, a family history of colon cancer, and or other gastrointestinal malignancies, as well as some genetic conditions that could predispose you to getting colorectal cancer earlier than the age of 55. So it is really important to check in um, to identify you know, what your risk factors are, when you should be screened, if you do have one of those risk factors, and what type of screening should be done. And uh, just a note, because a lot of people get very scared about colonoscopies, there are home-based tests now that you can do at the comfort of your own home that or blood or abnormal DNA within the stool. And then of course there are visual tests like our gold standard colonoscopy um, and or sigmoidoscopy. And the interval at which these should be done does vary, but it is important to check with your medical provider on what test is right for you and when to start this test. I was gonna ask you about that because I just had mine a, a couple of months ago and I had the traditional one and I have to admit, it was a lot easier than I ever expected. Uh, but moving on with our questions, we know that many people with colon cancer don't have symptoms in the early stages, but what are the types of symptoms actually people should be looking out for? Yes, so the symptoms of colon cancer do vary, um, and it depends on the location within the intestine or rectum, um, as well as the stage of the cancer. And like you mentioned, in earlier stages, most people have no symptoms at all, which is why detection and screening is so important. However, when symptoms do occur, we see things like changes in bowel habits, either constipation or diarrhea that lasts more than just a few days, um, blood in the stool, and this can vary from bright red to a dark maroon color, or even black and tarry, um, unintentional or unexplainable weight loss feeling very tired or fatigued, um, abdominal pain, discomfort, um, things like bloating, gas pain, and then having low red blood, red blood cell counts on your labs. That isn't explained by other health reasons. Now, you may be thinking, hey, I've had this before. Does this mean I have colorectal cancer? Not necessarily. Um, if you do have these symptoms, they sometimes can overlap with other medical conditions, some benign, um, and some more scarier um, than others. And so it is important to check in with your healthcare provider, especially if these symptoms have been progressive or ongoing, to see what may be causing this and get you to the appropriate testing and appropriate treatment. And, and during the testing, uh, and, and at least in, in my case, and maybe this is TMI, but uh, th they did discover a couple of polyps and they had to remove those. But my question is, what are those chances of those polyps turning into cancer? Yeah, so um, colon cancer, as you mentioned, starts from precancerous lesions called polyps. And polyps are basically growths within the internal lining of the intestines that have the potential to turn into cancer. Now, one thing I want our viewers to uh, take away from this is that not all polyps are the same. There are actually multiple varieties and not all of them will turn into cancer. Um, so several varieties, including adenomatous polyps or um, C-cell serrated polyps or the traditional serrated adenomas, these do have uh, the potential to turn into cancer later on, which is why screening is impo so important. And with colonoscopies, you can actually get these removed, um, lowering your risk. 
And then there are um, non-adenomatous polyps, which um, include hyperplastic polyps, and inflammatory polyps. And these generally do not carry a high risk of turning into cancer and are generally not considered precancerous. Now, um, depending on the size of the polyp, the type of the polyp, the number of polyps that are found, and how they look under the microscope after they've been excised and fed to pathology, um, all of this determines the risk of which you may develop colorectal cancer in the future. And depending on that, all, all of these factors, the, your next steps will be determined. Um, do you need colonoscopies sooner than 10 years? Or are there additional testing? Do you need to see a surgeon or have other follow-up testing done? This will all be determined by those factors, how many polyps, what they look like, and how big they are. And, and finally, and you touched on some of this, but what are the risk factors for uh, colon cancer? Yes, so I like to um, group risk factors in two buckets. So one bucket, you can't really control things like age. Uh, we know that your risk for colorectal cancer increases as you get older. Uh, gender, males, unfortunately, are more at risk of um, developing colorectal cancer than females. And then family history um, or genetic predisposition, conditions like um, Lynch syndrome or familial adenomatous polyp colorectal cancer in the family, or even your own personal history of inflammatory bowel disease and other medical conditions can predispose, predispose you to developing colorectal cancer. So you can't control these things. Now, the other bucket are um, lifestyle factors such as smoking, which increases your risk of colorectal cancer as well as other malignancies, um, alcohol consumption, especially heavy alcohol consumption a sedentary lifestyle. And then medical conditions like type two diabetes and obesity have also been linked to colorectal cancer. And then lastly, everyone talks about diet. And there is quite a strong link between a diet that is high in uh, uh, saturated fats, a, di a, a diet that is high in red meat and low in fiber has been strongly linked. So um, looking at your lifestyle, um, determining what your risk factors are, and then talking to your medical provider about how to minimize these risks and how, how and when to get screened is so crucial in preventing colorectal cancer and getting early detection if it does tend to develop in um, people. I will always good information. If you're 50, remember, get your screening. I can say it from personal experience, it's a lot easier than you think it'll be. So Dr. Neon Narula from Stanford Healthcare, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me.